erobertet den Bereich. Gegnerisches Schiff zerstört. Gute Arbeit. Hello everyone, and welcome back to World of Warship Splits with Terry. Today, we are looking, yes, we're looking at a premium, but it's a German battleship. And uh, as such, I am pretty much obliged to look at, and yes, I was really, really curious about this, because this is the Poison, or Prussia, if you want to have it in English. Now, before somebody asks, and because I see people doing this, or getting this wrong quite a bit, that letter there, after the U, that, that's not a B. So this is not the Poiben. <laughs> that is effective. That's a special letter in the German alphabet that is effectively replacing a double S, a sharp S. So um, if you want to type this and you don't know where to find it on the keyboard, just use two S. That's completely fine, and um, you can pretty much use it interchangeably these days. But yeah, this is the Poison, yet another H-class battleship that we have. Now, uh, interestingly enough. Uh, there was a bit of a flip around because what everybody expected was that this was going to be the tier 10 tech tree ship and uh, that the Großer Kurfürst was becoming a premium ship. But uh, it happened not to be this way around. And uh, this is actually a premium in line with the previous premium ships. For example, the Odin at tier 8, the Pommern at tier 9 and now this thing at tier 10. How does uh, well? I, I don't even need to talk about. Uh, I don't even need to talk about much in terms of historical accuracy because there isn't any. I mean, she carries 406 millimeter main guns, but in triple turrets, uh, the H39 design was meant to have four uh, sixes, but in twin turrets. And uh, these are, for all intents and purposes, probably the Freddy's guns. We'll we'll have to we'll have to have a quick look at that in the comparison. So we've got a lot of stats to compare. So let's begin with the obvious question: What is difference between the Poison and the Großer Kurfürst? Let's compare these two. First of all, we find out where the uh, where the secondary overload uh, level two has gone. It's gone to the Poison. <laughs> That's why it's gone from the Großer Kurfürst. Uh, she does not get the precise aim, but instead gets a rapid reload. But it's only a rapid reload one. So it's a 15% reload speed. It's not massive, but it is there. Uh, other than that, uh, yes, this is a very much a Grosser Kurfürst hull. It's the exact same, for all intents and purposes, the same hit points, the, the same armor, uh, the same maneuverability. Doesn't, there's not a huge amount of difference. 
And the main difference is in the guns. Whereas the Großer Kurfürst used to have the 420 mm guns and has been recently upgraded to the 457 mm guns, which are awesome. They're, they're not historical. <laughs> they should have been 480s if they were historical, and that would have been interesting, actually, with a slower reload and the second largest guns in the, in the game. But um, uh, nope, they're 457s, but they're great fun. They hit really, really hard. The Poison gets 406mm guns, but she gets 12 of them. And we're going to have to have a very quick look if these are indeed the Freddy's guns. Uh, they obviously you know, don't have the same range, don't do the same amount of damage, don't have the same Citadel bonus, and uh, have a reload time of 23 seconds, which is significantly longer than the 19.5 base that you get on the Grosser Kurfürst with the larger guns. The secondaries are identical, uh, so are the auto secondaries. Uh, the Poison, again, in, in line with the premium battleship line, gets torpedoes. Just like the Turpids, or the Odin, or the, uh, the Pommern. This thing gets torpedoes. But these, I think, are the Odin's torpedoes, because they've got a 6.9 km range, whereas Pommern still have the 5.4 standards. So, uh, relatively reasonably long-range torpedoes, I'd say. And, uh, I mean, people probably are used to it by now to see that German battleships tend to come with torpedoes at times, so it's probably not a massive surprise for anybody, but uh, it gives you that little extra edge in terms of the destroyer deterrence. The AA is identical, and the surface de detection is marginally better. So how does this thing compare to... Uh, well, let's have a very quick look at the Pommern, because the Pommern is, was sort of the, sim the same thing, um, at tier nine, where the Friedrich der Große used to have the uh, used to get used to get the 406 millimeter. Now, now the the Friedrich has the old guns from the Große Kurfürst, the 420s. So uh, slightly different, but this thing actually still had the had the 380s. But uh, yeah, you see, it's that's obviously uh, the different hull. But uh, uh, she had 12 four, 380 millimeter, but with a 25 second base reload, which was pretty atrocious. And obviously, these are smaller guns. These are pretty much the Bismarck's guns. And uh, you can see the torpedoes there are still at 5.4. So it's definitely an upgrade over the Pommern. Uh, we don't need to actually compare her to the Friedrich der Große, because the Friedrich der Große now has the Große Kurfürst guns, the 420. So uh, I can't really, unless I dig something up from, from the archives, uh, easily find out if these are exactly the same guns. But I would like to very quickly compare her to the Montana. Why to the Montana? because the Montana also has the Rapid Reload one, and the Montana also has 12 406mm main guns. Uh, the guns on the Montana, Montana being an American battleship, obviously have slightly better, uh, have better, definitely better range and slightly faster reload. They don't hit quite as hard on the, um, on the armor piercing, but the HE is a little bit better. Other than that, they are pretty similar. And uh, that's gonna be a theme, so. So what do we have here? We have a we have a Großer Kurfürst with 12 Friedrich der Große guns on the main guns. And uh, to compensate for the lackluster main guns, uh, she gets torpedoes. That, that would be my very, very brief summary of the whole thing. All right, so let's go through it. The, uh, the elite bonus is the same choice that you could have previously. You can either go with the improved belt or for a little bit better armor, or you can go with the full-on secondary set. I have gone on with the full-on secondary set simply because, uh, and I've mentioned this a couple of times, I think with the current proliferation of really, really hard hitting and really large caliber guns at top tier, uh, this is no longer a viable choice because at the ranges that you're playing a German ship, it really doesn't matter. Um, the French can, can Citadel you, uh, Vermont's will do it, Shikishima's, will, Yamato's obviously, since they've always been there. But um, hell, even the, the Italian 380s are hitting really hard with the AP, so uh, it's not a huge... Like, a tank build is not a huge uh, advantage anymore for close-range fights, as it used to be before we had all these really, really big guns coming around here. Uh... In terms of equipment, the Germans get the secondary but mod 2, which gives better range and better dispersion. Although the dispersion on the auto secondaries has recently nerfed, been slightly nerfed, but it's not a huge difference. Um, the auto secondaries are very, very bad at aiming 
at uh, maneuvering targets or target that are, targets are, are sailing towards you or away from you. Uh, they're effectively incapable of hitting a destroyer that comes towards you. Uh, they, will uh, they will always overshoot. And uh, the only thing that the auto secondaries can reliably really hit are uh, things that are either sail sailing in a straight line broadside or larger targets like battleships. And uh, that's kind of more where you want these, uh, these auto secondaries to, to help. So if you have to deal with destroyers, the 150s are your weapon of choice anyway. The second slot traditionally in German battleships for me goes into deck protection mod, which reduces the risk of fire. Um, it, I still believe it helps a bit. I haven't active, actually tested it, but uh, you're in tier 10, uh, midways exist and you will be on fire. So just deal with it. Steering gear mod, uh, mod 2 in the third slot is also sort of the traditional thing to do here. Now, the historical camo, and I've put that on here, is actually not the best choice, in my opinion, for this ship. The, uh, the, it gives hit points, it gives range on the main battery, it gives dispersion on the main battery, and it gives torpedo damage reduction. The dispersion is not going to make an awful lot of difference. These are German guns, the dispersion isn't great. Um, just like on the American guns, it's about the amount of, of lead that you sling down the range. And in unlike the Americans, you're actually playing the Germans at generally at ranges where it doesn't matter anyway. So not really. Whereas if you were going to get the uh, slightly, well, uh, sl sl slightly different looking, let's put it that way, slightly different uh, looking, uh, lo looking camo, where you where you would put some gold some gold uh, plating and uh, a honking big eagle at the front, <laughs> and we promise it's not American, then uh, you actually get both also the main battery range, but you also get secondary range and secondary auto range. This would actually be the better camo in my opinion. It is currently I think you get it for free if you get this ship, but as usual it's a tier ten premium, which means it's in a crate, which means you know economics and such. Uh, and gambling things. All right. Uh, so I have put the historical camo on here for one reason, because I want to compare the poison to how I am how I know my personal goals are cool first. So I've done this pretty much the same setup. And that's why I've also put Franz von Hipper in here, because I am sailing with Franz von Hipper and the goals are cool first. Uh, relatively easy choices. One difference, maybe, that you would take the fire supremacy for the additional rapid reload, because shooting gets two. Um, and obviously you wouldn't take the uh, improved marksman skill. Uh, the uh, the close quarters combat expert plus is very very nice on these things, and you would take the master reloader here. You could be very tempted to take adrenaline rush, but uh, honestly I wouldn't because it's a German battleship. Uh, it's tier ten, carriers exist. You will be on fire. You want <laughs> the extinguisher skill. <laughs> Uh, but one important factor here is that uh, Franz von Hipper has the improved armor-piercing shell. So this is a plus 7.5% AP penetration and plus 15% uh, penetration sustainability. Sustainability meaning that they lose less penetration power over time as they fly. So if we compare that to a regular captain, uh, let's, just, uh, let's just check that very quickly. So normally you get plus 5 and plus 10. But with von Hipper, you get uh, seven and a half and fifteen. So just to make sure to make that clear, this is the best captain for main gun penetration that you can get for a German battleship. Which means uh, this what you're what you're about to see is as good as it gets with these main guns. All right. Uh, is there anything I have to mention? I think not. Let's move ahead and get into some gameplay. In the first battle. It's 5v5 and we're playing on fault line. We're up against Monty, Wooster, Mino, Östergötland and a Yugumo. Uh, it's just bot carriers, but uh, carriers are generally the bane of your existence. But that's nothing new. Uh, that's just generally how things go uh, in, in, in tier 10. If, this, if it's a carrier battle, you often have to stick with, uh, with your team as much as possible. Now, uh, one thing that I have to mention while we're while we're starting to move ahead here, one thing that I have to mention is that uh, I play the Gosa first on my personal account on the North American server, and I play this thing on on the press account, which is on the Asian server. The Asian server is very very different for uh, German battleship gameplay. 
The Asian server is most of the time chock full of Shimas and Yamas, and the Yamas tend to hide behind the carriers. And uh, usually there isn't, even if it's not a Yama, there isn't an awful lot going on because most of the time it's it's a very, very static battle between uh, battleship lines all firing at each other at max range, um, cruisers getting sunk if there are any, and the uh, destroyers just, you know, kind of duking out in the middle. If there's a carrier in there, then everybody stays in their home base and huddles up. This is not the case on the, on the North American server most of the time. Okay, now the Z-52, let's get back to here. The Z-52 has spotted the bot Baltimore, and obviously that's sort of my my problem here. And uh, I, I am obviously a bit careful because there is going to be one destroyer. I'm varying my speed here a little bit, but uh, the Z's dropped torpedoes on the Baltimore, probably not going to hit, but I see that the Baltimore is shooting at me, and, and given that von Hipper has the sixth sense skill, I know that there's only one ship uh, attacking me. Now the Z smokes up, which uh, he should know better. Oh, that Baltimore actually runs with those torpedoes. He should know better. Bots, uh, yeah, the, the bot can totally spot him in the smoke. Bots negate smokes because bots are broken. I am going to make a video about that, actually. Uh, so I need to save my Z here because uh, that guy's going to be yeah. useful because the Yugomos just sunk the Des Moines, the bot Des Moines, and he's right next to us here. So I'm, I'm going to shred that Baltimore into bits and then the Z can go and uh, hopefully deal with the Yugomo and I can deal with what, yep, there he is. And I can deal with whatever is ahead of us. Because that Yugomo needs to go. I have no idea what's going on. This map is... This is one of the worst maps in, in the game, in my opinion. Because it is so massive. And uh, it, it, is, it is almost impossible to give any support to your team. So um, we're seeing that... The, okay, the left flank only consists of a Montana. I'm not afraid of Monty. But uh, the Yugomo needs to go. So we'll see if the uh, Z is able to do something about Yugomo. Or if he's going for the Monty. But uh, I'm going to start opening up at that Montana. Now he goes undetected, but that's only his secondaries, and he's not going to hit me with those. Uh, he's sitting stationary broadside on. Um, in a Grosser Kur first, this would have been a very, very short matter of, of things. But even in this thing, uh, the, the guns are not great. I would say they are sort of comparable to the Montana's guns. They're not bad. Per se, but uh, they've got nothing on the um, on the Kurfürst's uh, big guns, and that makes sense because, well, uh, Kurfürst has got 457 millimeter now, and they hit really, really hard. So at this point, um, there is Yugomo. My sec my auto secondaries are helping out because, like I said, he's sailing in a straight line, so uh, he's on very low health. Uh, yeah, and the Z is just taking care of that thing, so I can focus on killing the Monty, and that should not be an awful lot of problems. Uh, you can use the rapid reload. I think round about uh, 11 seconds is a good is a good uh, 10, 10 or 11 seconds is a good time to use it if you have the if you have the master reloader skill. But yeah, like I said, I'm I'm not afraid of Montana. Um, that's uh, that's, that's a, especially a Montana that uh, that agrees to fight me in secondary range. <laughs> Uh, there's, there's the bot carrier, but Monty is sailing out fully on broadside behind the island, so uh, we can once again uh, hit him in the side and then just get the... I still got the rapid reload if I need it. I'm just going to wait a little bit until I'm down to 11 seconds, then I'm going to use the rapid reload. I think that was a little early. I'm going to take 10 seconds would have been better, maybe 9, because uh, now I'm cycling, which means I'm missing the first, uh, I'm missing the first set. And uh, that doesn't matter because the, the secondaries can destroy them. I fired a torpedo there by accident, but yeah, that Montana has gone. Uh, he was never a threat, not at this range. And I can use this, the uh, the secondary overload to hit the the Taihu for an eight kilometer range. And yeah, that's just that's just a bot. So at this point, that's just farming. So you might be tempted to think that uh, more guns and um, and the torpedoes are are. Uh, sort of a good thing. Uh, the torpedoes, really, I find you're not going to be using an awful lot. Because most... I mean, un unless people give you the opportunity to, to play in torpedo range, then they can come as a little bit of a surprise. But um, most of the time, I find I don't really use the torpedoes an awful lot. Uh, they're more of a gimmick, and they're kind of nice if you're being... Try if a destroyer is trying to rush you, they might be a bit of a surprise. But uh, other than that, the gameplay is very, very similar to the Grosser Kur first. That said, uh, the guns obviously are nothing like the Grosser Kurfürst guns. These are really more like the Freddy's guns at <laughs> Tier 9, only that you get more of them. Uh, 
and it's it feels like a bit like the Montana. Individually, they don't do an awful lot, but you've got to have you've got a lot of them, and uh, if you can if you can make use of them, then they work. Let's do that again. In the second battle, we are playing Epicenter, and there's a midway. So remember what I said about Carrier being the scourge of your existence. Uh, also, obviously, three destroyers. There's a Shima, a Kitakaze, and a Yugumo. And we've still got Thandra and a Colombo on the enemy team. But uh, yeah, Carriers being a problem. So if there's a Carrier in play, you can't push. I mean, you can't push if there's... Most of the times you can't push. And I find on the Asian server, eight, eight out of ten games... Um, you have to play this like a Montana, with like, like a short-range Montana with more armor. That's pretty much what you're relegated to. Because if you if you start sailing forward, no one's going to come with you. Uh, the team is going to hide and let you die. <laughs> That's what I find. Uh, and especially if there's a carrier in play, then um, don't expect any cruiser or anything to give you AA cover. They're going to hide behind the next island and um, hope that they don't get shot at by the battleships. And they're all going to huddle around in the capture center. Now, in this case, we have one of these rare occasions where things get a little interesting. Well, first of all, the carrier is coming in. We do have a Shimakaze in the outer ring. And uh, we'll see where the carrier is focusing. We've got another Shima coming in from the other side. At least our destroyers are heading towards the center ring. And yeah, the carrier is going for me. So uh, there comes the first drop, that's obviously a double fire, second drop, triple fire, and I am damage controlling now because he is dropping the dive bombers. Why am I doing it like that? Because as you see when the torpedoes hit me, I still have three seconds on the uh, on the damage control. So there's guaranteed no flood from this. If he had waited with these torpedo bombers for, um, for me to damage control the fire and give me 10 seconds and then hit me for a perma flood, that would have been hurting a lot more. Okay, we've got a Yugumo coming in, so full on reverse, sooner up, because they are gonna, yeah, he's turning away. There are gonna be torpedoes in the way. Uh, so I'm just, just half ahead because I need a little bit of speed to steer into the torpedoes, but because of the sonar, and um, I am actually, uh, I am actually able to, you know, get an early reaction and just steer clear between these torpedoes. So yeah, if the Yugomo had had managed to stay uh, stay undetected, that would have been a different story. But because he got himself spotted, uh, that was that was a different thing. All right. Um, how does it look like? We are holding the inner the inner ring and it doesn't look like anybody from the enemy team wants to do anything about it. Uh, it looks like the Kitakaza and the Shima are going the long way around on the outside of the map. Like I said, it's one of those games. Uh, I'm getting shot at by the Colombo with semi armor piercing. <laughs> Good luck with that, buddy. And there comes the carrier again. So, uh, <laughs> there's the, there's all, now, now I am under fire from the carrier, from the Thundra. And there was a Yugomo out there, so uh, I can't push into that because, well, there's a Yugomo out there, and there's a Thundra, which means uh, once I am, I am in inevitably on fire, and uh, I'm probably getting a flood from these torpedoes. That's why I'm holding the damage control. Fire from the Thundra, and now I can Damacon because the torpedoes have hit. So once again, no chance of setting a perma flood. Uh, if the enemy team lets you get away with that sort of thing, <laughs> you can. <laughs> but um, it looks like our team is uh, pushing a little bit. Thunder obviously sets me on fire again. That's normal. And uh, I am just trying to push forward now and uh, getting some shots out, uh, shots off at the Thunder. There are some torpedoes coming in from the other side. And the carrier uh, actually has to run, um, but uh, is defending himself against the Shimakaze. So... Uh, I can I can continue dealing with the Thundra. I'm 30 seconds away from my um, from my damage control to being off cooldown. But as you can see, even against the British battleship, at these ranges, the guns don't do an awful lot. They are, um, and I think that Thundra is about to get shimmered. So uh, we'll, we'll just we'll just distract him a little bit. <laughs> yeah, there, there comes the Shima. That is relatively brave. He's going if the Thundra is reloaded. And that's a dead Shima, but he seems to have gotten away with it. And that's probably a very, very dead Thundra at this point. Yep. Uh, little Monsters vs. Aliens reference here. I appreciate that in that player name. And uh, once again, the carrier comes for me. First drop, second drop. Oh, no fires this time. There is a Shima. And let's see what he's doing. He's dodging. Okay, he's dodging the... Um, he's dodging the torpedo bomber. So he's per he is temporarily stationary. And now he's permanently stationary. So... <laughs> The armor piercing, the uh, the armor piercing penetration is actually low enough that at ten plus kilometers you can shoot AP at destroyers and do full penetrations quite reliably. So, 
Uh, and and you do get the occasional Citadel in, but um, the guns can also be very, very, very questionable at times. Okay, so now the, the Colombo is hiding behind the island and I am getting HE spammed by the Kitakaza. I just want to see if there are any torpedoes in the water and um, just sailing towards him, checking if the Colombo is coming out from there, but it looks like he isn't. And um, that means I'm going to have to deal with the Kitakaza, so we'll swing the whole thing around and uh, get the get the auto secondaries and the 150s uh, on on point now as you can see the kitakaza has been sitting still broadside on and has been regretting it because these 127 millimeter auto secondaries they are too they are hurting but uh, there comes the carrier again which means i need to turn away and the kitakaza smokes up so i'm on fire obviously can't lob that just frustration uh, obviously triple fire damacon because the torpedo drop is already coming in and i should be able to avoid most of those torpedoes and uh, there we go. Uh, no, no flood because the damage control was still on, uh, was still active. But now I've, I've sailed too far away because I had to dodge the torpedoes. So I'm not going to get these shots on target anymore against the Kitakaze. Uh, we are probably going about to lose our carrier, who had to run away from enemy destroyers the whole game. <laughs> uh, yeah, this this is a a special game where the team effectively the enemy team had lost probably two minutes in when they refused to get into the capture circle and the two destroyers were sailing around the outside um yeah you you, you don't win games like that uh you you'd lost already at this point uh our friendly shima is is taking the mvp we haven't done an awful lot and that is because we haven't been able to get into brawling range of anything and we've just had to rely mostly on our main guns to do a little bit of damage on things which means we haven't been doing an awful lot of damage but we have been tanking uh, effectively the whole game, we've been not doing nothing but tanking the aircraft carrier, which, uh, and, and let me be clear here, if that aircraft carrier had uh, was more experienced, if that player was more experienced, I would have been dead three minutes in, uh, because I would have been perma-flooded, and then the next wave would have been setting fires again, and there's, there would have been absolutely nothing I could have done about this. So, uh, except sitting back with my own carrier, and um, and slugging things out at max range, which is not something you want to do with the with the German battleship. So, to answer the big question, uh, Preussen or Großer Kurfürst? Uh, for me, a relatively clear answer: Großer Kurfürst. The gun, the guns are better on the Kurfürst. You have the faster reload; they hit much much harder. Um, the uh, the torpedoes are okay; are nice to have, really. But I find myself not really using them an awful lot, because if anything is if anything is is fighting me in in 6.9 kilometer range, it's going to be dead before the torpedoes get there. Uh, the only reason really you could use the torpedoes is destroyer deterrence, but then again uh, they tend to dodge these or if they are aware of them. But if, if a destroyer wants to rush you, you may be able to use your torpedoes. So it's it's very situational. Uh, once again, in, in something like the Gorsa Core first, I would just rely on my secondaries and uh, just make sure the destroyer dies. <laughs> and dead destroyers don't shoot no torpedoes at you. So um, very, very situational. Uh, personally, I think the Gorsa Core first is the better choice here at tier 10. It's not, don't get me wrong, it's not a bad ship. Um, but especially if you are on it, if you're playing on a server that has a very, very defensive tier 10 meta, you're going to have problems already with the Corsa Core first, and you're going to have more problems with this thing because the the main batteries don't do an awful lot at extreme range. You're not going to get an awful lot of hits in, and uh, you don't have a precise aiming to to short to to shrink that uh, that dispersion ellipses uh, somewhat. So uh, it's not a bad ship, and uh, I would play it. But I would if I if I was given the choice, I would prefer the uh, the Core first and the Core first is free. So there you go. Anyway, that's it for today. Thanks everybody, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.